Hello and welcome back to part two of my series of videos on the 53D series and memory upgrades. Now, for those that aren't aware, there was a part one to this series where we talked about upgrading this NAS with crucial unofficial memory. Now, I say unofficial. QNAP do support a number of different memory modules in their compatibility list as well as arriving with their own memory if you need. But this device arrives with support of DDR4 memory, with the QNAP arriving with either 4 or 8 gig of DDR4 2400 MHz memory. In the previous video, we looked at installing a single module of DDR4 16 gigabyte uh, memory, a SODIMM stick at 2666 crucial memory DDR4, and get that inside the available slot to see if it will be recognized, which it did. It was successful, and from pretty much everything we could see, the system did recognize that memory module. However, when we utilized the 32 gig model, we realized that it would not see it. The system wouldn't boot. The lights came on, but it was frankly no one home. And this video is where we're going to utilize two 16 gig sticks. We're going to install two 16 gig sticks of DDR4 memory in the two available bays and hopefully see if this device can support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Now, the things that are important about this. First and foremost, the CPU inside, much like QNET themselves and what they volunteer, is supposed to only support up to eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory maximum. But as we've seen from CPUs in the past and ones we've tested, we've been able to utilize larger amounts of memory for applications such as surveillance, virtualization, Plex Media Server, and just generally system utilization, particularly in a multi-user, multi-software accessibility uh, accessing environment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the two sticks of four gig memory that are currently inside this device, the two that are supplied with it, and we're gonna install these memories, uh, modules. So, let's get started. Now, this device we've already set up, so if you are doing this in today's video, a few things. One, bear in mind that this is a test that I'm performing and something that if you're going to try, be aware that you are me messing around with something that may well invalidate your warranty as well as possibly to stabilize your system if not done right or indeed at all. So do bear that in mind. Also, on top of that, what I'm doing with this is utilizing the 60, I'm sorry, the 653B, which is their six bay model in this series, but we're pretty certain that whatever we do with this six bay in terms of results, in, with any of the upgrades that we've been talking about in this or the previous videos, that this has been possible on any QNAP NAS, that this device is going to support that memory module maximum or minimum, regardless of the ones that are the memory modules we use, and regardless of where you use it, in the two bay, the four bay, or the six bay. So, I've removed all of that memory. I'm just gonna remove the power brick, because we've already disconnected the power. We're gonna have a look inside there. And inside, as you can see on camera, is our two um, four gig DDR4 modules. We're gonna remove those one by one. And again, I haven't got a camera angled right for this. But this is already quite tough to do, single-handed from this angle. There's our first memory stick, and if we have a look, that is the memory module we're dealing with there. We're gonna remove that, pop that to one side. Then we're gonna get the second module. And there we are. There is our second memory module. And now we're gonna start installing our crucial DDR4. Now, when I'm not dead arming myself on some equipment there, we can start installing our memory. Now, as mentioned, this is crucial 2066, 2,666 megahertz. So this is a higher frequency than the memory that the unit arrives with by default. In the case of this device, you have to apply these modules with the label face down. And this is, in case you needed to know, this is the crucial CT16 G4SF D8266. I know, catchy name, right? Um, we'll get that first memory module inside. And we've applied it, and the clips are attached. Now, where you can see that there, there is our first memory module applied. Next, we'll go for the next module. And again, get a separate stick. 
These arrive at around £60, each of these uh, modules each. You probably pick them up for 70 odd based on your local region and including your tax. Um, so we are talking about an approximate 120 to 140 pound upgrade here. So if we get that module installed inside, click it down. And now, as you can see, there is our memory modules. You can also see two banks of cells or uh, on each of those. If we compare that with the other ones, which have got four memory cells and nothing on the other side, there's a vast amount of memory that is now going to be accessible from the system if this works. So now I'm going to start reattaching, uh, sorry, reinstalling those drives. Um, I'm currently utilizing a mixed drive environment with different volumes. So we can go into there, pop those in there, pop those in. Then we're going to install our empty base that we're leaving for the um, hot swap video coming very soon. And there is our base. So I'm going to attach the front panel. And now we're going to start attaching this device and getting it set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is get our power cable. I'm going to attach it to this. So we're now we've got our power connector. Just to let you guys know that nothing's being skipped. Next, we're going to get our LAN cable for network connectivity. And we're going to connect it. So before I press the power button, let's examine some stuff straight away. This is a device that already had QTS and the RAID already ready to go. We had it running on an 8 gig system, and we're now doing the upgrade even though the software has already been deployed. Now, if you're going to run any memory upgrade on pretty much any NAS system, it's highly recommended that you make sure that its operating system or just graphical user interface software, depending on the NAS brand, is always pre-installed and set up first rather than trying to use the device in its vanilla mode before you've installed the software and adding your memory then make sure the base level of the software has been pre-installed and then power the device down install the memory you're going to utilize then power it up power it up now i don't know whether this is going to work this is the first time i've done this test and now we're going to find out if this is going to run now, in our previous tests, this is how it ran. In the successful attempt with the one times 16 gigabyte module, the device span up and after a few seconds, we heard the drives. Now, these are quite enterprise grade 14 terabyte drives, so they will make a little bit more noise. After that, the system beeped after about three to five minutes, and then we were able to access QTS via my Windows laptop just over there. In the failed attempt, when we tried to install the 32 gig module in the previous video, it did not get as far as letting us access the device, and we heard the drives go into a spin down mode as the system was unable to boot. So what we're gonna find out in about three to five minutes is whether this experiment is going to work. So let's fast forward three or five minutes and find out what's happened. Okay, so I'm pleased to confirm that after around about four minutes, our QNAP TS653D loaded successfully within that three and five minute limit, just like I said before. Now, I'm also pleased to confirm that the memory has been recognized. We go into the control panel here, and we can see 32 gig of available, uh, sort of allocated memory with 31 gig available to use. If we go to the resource monitor, we can take a good look there and we can see that we're utilizing that amount for the system whilst in operation as well as the 31 gig currently usable there. In virtualization station, just like before, we could create a virtual environment if we call this memory test. And then this one will make it a Windows VM there. We'll go with Windows 10 Legacy BIOS, two of the four cores available on this PSU, uh, CPU even. But what's interesting is we can go all the way up to here and give this a whole host of memory. So let's go with 28 gig of memory, which we can also enable and attach. We've got the CD, we can say where we want the storage to live. So we can pre-allocate this memory if we so choose. Give it 250 gigabytes for that hard drive. But for the most part, it's all pretty straightforward. We've been able there, we've allocated 28 uh, gigabytes of memory. And the VM, of course, this is a non-CD enabled uh, VM here. So we're only really gonna be looking at 
bog standard um, DOS kind of text here within this VM environment, but it has successfully seen that 32 gig of memory. Now, this video is not going to be indicative long term of if upgrading the memory unofficially has, you know, any, you know, uh, stings in its tail. We don't know. I will say that the system does successfully seem to recognize that memory. We're able to pre-allocate and change some of the memory on pre-existing applications and we can see the system utilizing that memory and caching and flushing that memory accordingly as you would expect within that environment. You can see there a lot of the spikes and historical data of that memory being utilized relative to its own size. And again, that goes quite far too. We can look at all the different areas of the NAS, which not only show indicators of the internal hardware and how it's utilized, but also more and more information about the device long term. So let's log in there. So overall, got to say that I'm quite happy that this device is seemingly accepting the two 16 gig DDR4 modules. There's still no, you know, avoiding the fact that both QNAP and um, the Intel based CPU both boast a maximum of eight gigabytes. But as we know from the previous generation of Celerons, you can utilize larger memory quantities. What that means long term is something we still don't quite know. So just stay aware and make sure your backups are in place if you're going to go ahead with experimentation like this. And of course, you can always contact the guys at span.com for more information about units with memory upgraded in advance. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad this has gone as well as it has. And I will see you on the next video as we test more and more of the newer generation of NASIs and putting them through their paces with regards to memory compatibility. See you later.